Buenas noches, bienvenidos a nuestra presentación del de día de hoy. Si usted quiere oír esta presentación en español, por favor píquenle al globo que encuentran en la parte de abajo de la mano derecha, seleccionen español y ahí los esperaré con esta presentación en español. Buenas noches y bienvenidos. Good evening and welcome to Talking Equity Atlanta. Uh, we're gonna do a quick cluster roll call. Uh, so could we get a quick shout out of your school or the organization uh, that you're representing this evening in the chat? I would like to know which schools our APS students uh, attend tonight. The M. Thero High School. Bicket Elementary, Deerwood, Kimberly Elementary School, a couple Deerwoods, Continental Colony, ABOECC, seat eight at large. Welcome, uh, board member Brown. Deerwood, Deerwood, Deerwood. Okay. Bunch Middle School, Figures. Excited. We're so excited to have all of you tonight. So as we begin our meeting tonight, I'm going to just begin with a few quick norms. Uh, so you, everyone will remain muted until the breakout rooms begin. Uh, the breakouts will last about 25 minutes, uh, and the APS staff is really here just to listen tonight. Uh, and lastly, please be courteous and respectful of all opinions. We're very excited to have you tonight. Uh, and as we begin, we'll have a quick introduction by board member Ishe Collins. Had to come, come off mute. Sorry, you guys. Thank you so much, Mr. Stroud. I appreciate it. And good evening, everyone. Um, as you know, um, I am Ishe Collins. Well, good evening, Thero Cluster parents. And thank you so much for joining us tonight for tea, which is Talking Equity Atlanta. Um, as many of you guys may have met me, I am Ishe Collins and honored to serve as vice chair of the board and your district six school board member. And, um, and I'm honored to be a part of this relevant and timely conversation tonight. I am also joined by a few of my esteemed board colleagues for tonight's discussion as well. I know Cynthia Briscoe Brown is um, with us tonight and gave a shout out. And we'll have a few, a couple of our other board members that will join us, that will join us as the conversation, um, you know, takes place tonight. We've, um, so we've all heard the word equity, but tonight our district leaders will share what that word means for APS and why we believe it should be at the forefront of our work. We also want to hear from you about how we can work together to create a culture that encourages excellence for every student, regardless of whether they are affluent or marginalized, black, brown, or white, identifying as he, she, or they, or diverse in their ability status. Every student, deserve, every student deserves an equitable chance at success. And you guys have been a part of, have been a part with us through this process, through our equity policy, through um, the conversations that the board has had over equity and even the creation of our Center for Social and Equity, um, and for Social, excuse me, my, our Center for Equity and Social Justice. Let me slow down, I have my niece trying to, to pan, pan her off. Um, but with more, I would love and um, I would love to introduce you to Dr. Tahita Baker Jones, who our Chief Equity and Social Justice Officer. So Dr. Jones, take the floor. Thank you, board member Collins, for that introduction. And good evening, everyone. I bring greetings um, on behalf of our superintendent as well, Dr. Lisa Herring, um, who cannot join us this evening. And I want to echo many of the points that she has shared with us in um, sessions past. Um, we know that this past school year, as board member Collins uh, mentioned, hasn't been easy for many of us. Um, some families were managing online learnings while working a full-time job, while others struggled to put food on the table as businesses closed and as jobs were lost due to the pandemic. Uh, despite, each, despite this, each of you worked hand in hand with us to ensure that um, uh, Atlanta Public Schools and our students in Atlanta Public Schools had the uh, resources that they needed to be successful. Um, 
And with your engagement uh, and support, we have navigated through uncharted territory successfully, and we are excited um, for the year ahead. And so I'm going to ask that we transition the slides, but during Dr. Heron's recent reimagined cluster meetings, we briefly touched on equity. And as board member Collins mentioned tonight, we will continue that conversation to ensure that every child is ready for post-secondary uh, success. So whether that's a four-year college, um, whether that's a trade school, whether that's the workplace or a junior college, we must prepare them based on their unique needs and skills. And our Center for Equity and Social Justice will be a key part of this courageous work. So I would like to share with you all a warm welcome and introduction from a few of our Center team members who are here with us this evening and who will be dedicated to partnering with you to advance the work of educational equity in APS. Meow and greetings. Hola y bienvenidos. Bonjour. Aloha. Namaste. Sawabona. Konnichiwa. Guten Tag. Marhaban. Ciao. Pujambo. Hello. My name is Quentin Stroud of the Equity Policy Analyst working at the Center for Equity and Social Justice. Mi nombre es Joana Garcia y soy la especialista en la comunidad Latinx en el Centro de Equidad y Justicia Social. My name is Quentin O'Neill, the coordinator for supply diversity with the Center of Equity and Social Justice. My name is Ashley Reese, and I am the Administrative Manager in the Center for Equity and Social Justice at Atlanta Public Schools. My name is Larry Wallace. I am the Executive Director of Federal Programs in the Center for Equity and Social Justice here in Atlanta Public Schools. My name is Deirdre Smith, Organizational Ombuds with the Center for Equity and Social Justice. My name is Stacy Wyatt. I'm the Executive Director of Equitable Learning Environments at the Center for Equity and Social Justice. I'm Rhonda Hudson the coordinator of Equitable Student Support Services and the Center for Equity and Social Justice. I am Gina DeVoe. I am the coordinator of Equitable Schools and Academics in the Center for Equity and Social Justice. My name is Natasha Speed, Executive Director for Equitable Resource Strategy in the Center for Equity and Social Justice. My name is Keisha Copeland, and I am the Director of Family Engagement in the Center for Equity and Social Justice. My name is Katisha Kennebrew, and I'm the Program Director for Equity Strategy in the Center for Equity and Social Justice at Atlanta Public Schools. I'm looking forward to joining you at T. Bienvenidos al T. Welcome to T. Welcome to T. Welcome to T. Welcome to T. Thank you for joining us for T. Welcome to 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 T. Hello. My name is Dr. Tawhida Baker-Jones, and I'm the Chief Equity and Social Justice Officer for the Center for Equity and Social Justice at Atlanta Public Schools. Welcome to T. All right. And I also know we have um, one or two uh, staff members, one on this call who uh, was not in the video, um, who I would like to come off mute and introduce herself as well. And that's Emily Ward. So Emily, I'm gonna ask that you join us. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Ward um, and I am the coordinator for Equity Focused Professional Learning and the Center for Social Justice, Equity and Social Justice. And welcome to TEEP. Thank you, Emily. And so um, as Dr. Herring has shared in, uh, previously at APS, our mission is through a caring culture of equity, trust, and collaboration, every student will graduate ready for college, career, and life. Um, and in, uh, along with Superintendent Herring and APS leaders, we are working closely together to plan and strategize what the work of equity and social justice means for every child. And to do this work well, we need your help. So I would like for us to first take a look at what we've already committed to doing as an APS family and what our vision is for this work, um, and then transition to hearing more from you about what the work is that ahead of us that needs to be done and how we can best partner in this work. 
And so our vision, our vision as a district is a high performing school district where students love to learn, educators inspire, families engage, and the community trusts the system. Um, to bring these words to life, equity must be the through line. And then to reach our mission and vision, we have an aim for equity. And our aim is that each subgroup grows and that we not continuously compare subgroups against one another, but, but we also acknowledge that APS has one of the largest achievement gaps between race and class of students, but we are growing students. As you can see from this slide here, achievement for all students grew in ELA and math milestone performance by 5% between 2017 and 2019. Uh, black students grew 6% in math and 5% in ELA between that same time. And for our Latinx students, the reverse trend was uh, true. Our white students had a 4% growth in the same subject areas and their growth was um, their growth was slightly lower because their achievement was higher. Um, the table also shows that we had growth with our ELL students, our Asian students and our students with disabilities as well. With regard to our graduation rates, um, Throughout the city, the graduation rate between 2019 and 2020 grew as well, um, yet there's still work to be done uh, because there is variation across the board. So here in the Thero cluster, high school graduation rate decreased by 6.6% to 80.4% overall. So the truth is that we APS is making progress, but our progress must be more than incremental. It must be aggressive if we want all of our students to be successful. And we can only accomplish this with equity as our lens and keeping an intentional focus on every child. And so what is equity really? So I wanna take some time to break down how we're defining equity, not only in terms of definition technical terms, but also in layman's terms. So we can all be on the same page about what that is. And at APS, we're defining equity as the quality of being just and fair, regardless of economic, social, cultural, and human differences among and between persons. So what that means is that there's a difference between equity and equality, right? Equality means every child gets the same support. Equity necessitates that we provide each child with the specific uh, supports that they need to thrive and be successful. And so to foster a culture that encourages excellence for all students and staff, we believe that equity needs to be the through line and at the forefront. Um, every student should have the opportunity to come to school and have access to effective teaching. And our students also deserve to safely and comfortably learn and be who they are. So the aim for our equity efforts is to provide students with the additional and differentiated resources they need based on their educational needs. So for instance, if one of our students enters APS reading several grade levels behind their fellow classmates, they need additional supports, literacy resources and support so that they can meet their fullest potential. While other students may come into our system reading well beyond their fellow classmates. And that student is in need of new and innovative opportunities to remain engaged. So e equity requires that we meet each of those students where they are, not provide each of those students with the same levels of support. And that is where we are able to then achieve social justice. Social justice is achieved when, as a district, we have broken the predictive link between demography and outcomes. So what does that mean, right? So more specifically, social justice is when we can no longer predict how a student will perform based on their race, based on their gender, or whether they live north or south of the I-20. We should not be able to predict that student's outcomes based on their makeup or their geography or their identity markers. And once we've achieved that ideal, then we've not only achieved equity, but we've also achieved social justice. And so in order to reach those very lofty ideals, we have to be equitable and socially just in our instructional practices. And so equitable instruction is instruction that is relevant to students' lives, it connects to their interests, and it meets their, the students' needs, as I mentioned already. And then 
social justice as modeled in our instructional practices requires that students see themselves reflected in the curriculum, that they have a voice in the curriculum and that the curriculum models their identity with regard to their race, ability status, gender, or any other identity that the students may have. And so our center, the Center for Equity and Social Justice is here to support the district in doing this work. And we support the district by helping thought partnering with the district, being a support system and being accountability buddies with the district and providing more equitable resources um, this, for students and staff. And this includes ensuring that we have wraparound services for both, as well as serving as a gateway for managing equity related concerns and questions for our community. And then ultimately supporting the district in increasing academic ach achievement and growth for all students across all subgroups. And so now that we have a foundation of what our work is together and what the work is to be done, we've created breakout groups because we really want to hear from you and take this time to hear what's top of mind and top of heart for you as it relates to equity. And so we're going to number you off odd and even numbers and we're going to ask that our odd numbers answer questions one and three and that our even numbers answer questions two and four we also have a um, open-ended question just for you to share what's top of mind and top of heart for you as it relates to equity here at APS and what work you feel needs to be done to accomplish the goals that I shared with you earlier um, we have assigned a team member from our Center for Equity and Social Justice to be with you in your breakout groups. They will serve as facilitators and note takers. They're there to listen and to capture your voice. Um, I will ask if you need Spanish interpretation, if you could please drop that in the chat so that we know who you are and we can ensure that we assign you to our Spanish speaking breakout group. Um, and with that being said, um, let's talk Equity Atlanta. So I'm going to ask my colleague um, Quentin to support me in putting you in breakout rooms. And I just ask that as the um, as the invitation pops on your screen, inviting you to join the breakout room that you click that so that you can enter your respective breakout. Um, you'll have 25 minutes to um, discuss the questions in open-ended discussion and um, we'll reconvene and then share out from there. All right, so we are back in session. Um, thank you all for um, your transparency and your candor and your dialogue and your discussions. I had the opportunity to pop into uh, several of our um, discussion groups um, as you all were uh, talking and speaking with one another uh, to ensure full transparency in our work we would like to discuss a few of the takeaways that you all uh, highlighted in your small groups group sessions and so we had um, three groups so i'm going to ask if we can have a representative from each just share one or two takeaways from your session with us that would be helpful and i'm going to uh, tag group one uh, it seems like Ilya. You you all had um, some very positive uh, dialogue that occurs. So if you want to share one or two takeaways from your group, that would be awesome. Or lose. I don't know who um, is the representative. It's me. It's me. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Elias do it in Spanish. Um, our parent says that um, she was happy to have the opportunity to that the school gave her to continue the education virtually when this uh, pandemic thing happened and that allowed her daughter to continue studying and doing her best. And also um, she shared with us that um, the school gave her all the tools and the, and the necessary things for her daughter to go to college. So she's very, very grateful for that. And she has only good things to say about how um, she's been um, heard of and listened and shared with resources and materials and everything else for her kids to be successful. Thank you for that. Um, and so group two, um, I don't know who the um, spokesperson is, but feel free to jump in. Hi, this is Rhonda. For our group two, we had uh, Benita. So Benita, I'd like to introduce you to give our uh, highlights. 
Okay. Okay. Well, we, we had a great discussion. Uh, some of the things that we talked about, uh, we talked about how um, the resources um, are so important. We talked about resources in terms of making sure that um, students, we have health, health resources for our students, making sure that, you know, um, technology is a part of um, resources that, you know, we give to our kids. Uh, we also talked about in terms of, um, we thought about thinking about what are some of the things that, you know, um, really can help our students you know, progress from, you know, year to year. And we talked about being critical thinkers. We talked about, you know, personalized learning. Uh, we just talked about a gamut of things. Uh, great discussion. I didn't write notes because, but I was just really in, in, you know, engulfed in the conversation, but great discussion. Thank you. You're Please welcome. Friend. I appreciate you. Um, and so group three, Yes, so good evening, everyone. I'm Katisha Kennebrew, and I will happily report out on Group 3. First, I just want to give grace and thanks to Group 3. We had a lot of um, very real and authentic conversations. So I'll start with question one. Question one was around cultural competence and making our students feel like they belong and feel affirmed. And our group shared that we definitely need to continue social emotional learning. SEL was lifted up by a number of participants and it was shared that um, with more time to do and practice SEL with our students, we think that they'll feel more valued and they'll have an opportunity to really um, connect. Um, we also heard that we really need to uh, enhance and lift up SST which are our student support teams, um, especially with our um, juniors and seniors. We, it was highlighted that we need to continue having programs that reflect the actual cultures and uh, of the students and some great ideas around that centered around partnering with the community leaders that are right there in the neighborhoods where our schools are located. So whether they're business owners or bankers, firefighters, et cetera, we can lift up those community leaders so that our students know the options that they have um, ahead of them. There were lots more ideas around question number one, um, but those are some of the highlights. And then very quickly for question number three, this is around making sure that our APS students graduate academically prepared, engaged, and resourceful. And um, we had real honest um, in, uh, input from a parent who just admitted that her student was not completely engaged and not just during the pandemic season, but even before. So what was lifted up is we definitely need to make sure we have more interactive curriculum, more interactive delivery of instruction um, so that our students really feel connected. Project-based learning was lifted up so that they can have actual real world activities to connect with their learning in the classroom um, to the outside world. We had a, a, an alum of APS in our group um, who shared that that really made a difference in her life. And the more that we can expose our students to paid internships and job opportunities, they'll be able to better connect um, their, their education to what they really have ahead of them. We heard more tutors. We heard more mentors. We heard making sure that we have student support teams in all of our classrooms and, and schools, excuse me, so that we're not um, stressing that particular position where they're having to be shared across a number of schools so that we can really um, collaboratively have teachers, parents, and students work to develop the schedules and the supports um, that are needed. I could go on and on. We really had an engaging group, um, but one of the things that we did want to leave with is there was a, a sentiment around parent engagement and how we've been talking about it as a district for a good amount of time. So we really do need to get serious and creative in ways to more effectively engage our parents. So again, thank you uh, to our group and our facilitators and, and everyone who shared thoughts tonight. Thank you for that group three. And thank you everyone for your honesty, your candor, your transparency, um, respecting for differing opinions and willingness to be uncomfortable for the purpose of good, healthy conversation. Um, in line with what Katisha shared, I actually dropped in the chat uh, two links uh, because we are looking for interns um, to support us and get real world experience here in a variety of fields, whether it's HR, communications, 
um, as well as DEI and equity work. So please feel free to share with our scholars and our students so that they can get that real world experience that group um, three talked about. Um, but with that, we are attempting to find real solutions, right? So real solutions to all of these challenges that were highlighted and addressed on behalf of all and every student that we serve. And we agree that it'll take hard collaborative work and dialogue such as the one that we have now. Um, just so you are aware of next steps in this process, the information that we are gathering from our T's will be used to also inform our equity audit that we're conducting right now and will be used to guide the district's efforts to achieve equity. And so there are many, many other topics that we would love to hear your input and your voice on. So you did receive a survey when you registered for this event in T. Um, and so if you haven't already completed that survey, which has some additional questions, we would love your reflections on um, as we comb through the data for this audit. That would be appreciated. We will also drop the link. I see Katisha, thank you. You dropped the link in the chat. Um, if you haven't completed that survey, please do so. Your voice matters. And will help us um, to get this work done. Uh, again, equity is at the forefront here in Atlanta public schools and to foster a culture that encourages excellence and equity for all students and staff, we must keep equity at the forefront. And when we achieve this ideal, we will truly have equity and social justice for all. So thank you all for your time and your efforts and your energy tonight. I appreciate you and wish you all a great evening in week ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.